Hey, Foot Clan, fantasy football drafts right around the corner. Don't forget to dominate your draft with the Ultimate Draft Kit. It's all of our insights that we have poured our lives into for the last year, all our player profile videos, and there's an app this year that you can get for free once you have the Ultimate Draft Kit. Go to ultimatedraftkit.com. Hi, this is Isabel Green from Miami, Florida, two-time member of the Listener League, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in to the show. Howdy. <laughs> Thursday, June 13th, it's the Jason and Andy experience once again. Mike will be back on our our next episode, not to worry, not to worry. Jay Grizz is here representing. Demanding for Mike to stay away, saying, this is my show now. You could hear that in the roar. I see he's reading a book um, during the episode, Brooks. He's a learned man. Yeah, he's studying up. He's a learned um, bear. For the mailbag he's questions. not a man. From what it looks like, it is a, a, a pretty thick read. Uh, a lot of pictures. It's from An Alaska State of Mind. The name of the book is The Salmon Way. Mm. That's a RBBC philosophy yes. that you don't know about. Uh, welcome in. Great show today. Tackling some mailbag questions. Also solicited the Foot Clan for some AMA questions. So some of those... Uh, you know, uh, questions about the podcast or the business, or I think there was a pet-related question in there. We'll sprinkle those in with the fantasy football questions today. Here's the quick question of the episode, Mr. Moore. Mm. Uh, I put this in here this morning because I just want to know the answer. I want to know your answer. Which fantasy football offense takes a nosedive in 2019? And the reason this is top of mind is because I went and I looked up last year's points per game numbers, NFL offenses. Uh, you had the high of highs, the Kansas City Chiefs leading the league. And then three touchdowns below them on average was the low of lows. The Arizona Cardinals offense averaged 1.1 <laughs> point more than the amount of goals the U.S. women's national team scored yesterday. Yeah, if which was 13. If the Arizona Cardinals raised up to like a bottom five offense, like raised all the way up to be bottom five, they'd score an extra touchdown a game. That's how bad yes. that offense was. They last were year. so far and away the worst. They were like seven points worse. Yeah. Almost, yeah. One might call it a touchdown. A touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> so, what offense takes a nosedive in 2019? What do you think? What's your answer? So. I think the, the offense, if we're talking about what great offense takes a nosedive, the first one that comes to mind is actually Kansas City, but I don't like calling it a nosedive because they're still going to be a great offense. They're still going to be top. But historically, the the great offenses, the Peyton Manning Broncos when he came back and also threw 50, those, those have huge, huge drops the next season. Um, but if we're looking for one that could actually nosedive, like someone that was – one of those top five scoring offenses that could end up really disappointing. I would throw the Seahawks out there because mm. you look at the extreme touchdown efficiency of Russell Wilson, how much they want to run the ball, be a defensive minded run, run, run uh, your team gently down the stream. And <laughs> the thing is, is that doesn't usually produce great offensive output. They could still be a very good team, but I think the it's an interesting re regression could come. It's an interesting, you know, Doug Baldwin retiring, not part of the offense. If Chris Carson wasn't healthy, could Rashad Penny bear enough of the load to provide the kind of offensive numbers that you had last year? It, it's an interesting. I believe he could. Yeah. Well, there you go. But uh, um, yeah. okay, I the answer for me has to be Pittsburgh. I just have to believe that it's Pittsburgh. Last year, the fourth. Highest points per game in the league at 26.8 points per game. And I just don't believe you can be better without Antonio Brown on offense. 
the pressure that Antonio Brown takes off of a player like James Conner, who I do not believe is as skilled as Le'Veon Bell. There was uh, opportunity for Conner to come in, be efficient, be effective. I, that's not to say Conner's not a good player for fantasy or for uh, you know everyday Sunday purposes in the NFL, but you're not better without Antonio Brown. And you're not better without Lev Bell on the roster. It's an it's a wide receiver core that it, at a minimum you have to concede is being rebuilt, right? Yeah. I mean, you have Juju Smith-Schuster who has to take a new role as the number one target. Yeah, and you don't even know, is it Dante Moncrief? Is it James Washington? Is it... Uh, Deontay Johnson. Exactly. There's, yeah. I mean, and, and you know, they, the, they really, they lost Jesse James. Oh, and so, gosh. like, you know, you talk Antonio Brown, <laughs> okay... Sure, but the outlaw is also yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. That's going to affect this offense in drastic ways. <laughs> follow the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can follow us all on Twitter or Instagram at Andy Holloway, at Jason FFL, at FF Hitman. That's that's big news. We've never said that before. That's because, because it hasn't been true. Yeah, yeah. Do you, you notice that? Yeah. Because my handle was not at Andy Holloway for a while on Instagram. But it, it was is Footballer's now. Dad. I'm proud of you because for, I was. I'm not. What am I? Not the father of the show anymore. You are, but you had to change one. You had to change one of your handles to match the other. That's what happened. There you go. Uh, you can find us on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and review on Spotify, and ad free on Stitcher Premium. We are going to get right into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. A lot to talk about in the news, stuff we didn't cover on the last episode, Jason. We had the head-to-head -head mock draft, and if you didn't listen, you can go back to Tuesday's show. Rave reviews. Oh, I mean, Rotten Tomatoes through 90, the roof. 98% fresh. Now, there was a lot of – when you have a mock draft, you have a lot of opinions. Right. Not just from us. Like, we have our opinions on who we thought – had a better draft and then people grade drafts based on, Oh, do you like the starters? Do you like the whole roster? What do you, do you like the Texans? These are questions that <laughs> right. that people bring up. And so, yeah, I heard, I heard a, a little bit of feedback on having three Texans. So I want to talk about that for two seconds. Do, can I have two seconds? Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you 10. And that is just to say that uh, throughout a draft, like, cause I had just said, Hey, look, I don't want to stack Hopkins and Miller. And then I took Miller around later. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I made the right decision. I probably didn't, right? It was a mock draft. I probably should have just stayed away. That being said, I want people to understand there is a value for everybody. Lamar Miller was a round cheaper than he was the round before. And so they rep where you draft a player represents something different for your team. So if you took two of your first four players on the same team, it means something different for your roster than if you took players later and I had made the argument look I'm not going to draft a handcuff for Lamar Miller later in the draft uh, for the same reason but I think it's interesting as the draft proceeds you have even if you're in that situation where you don't want to have multiple players from the same team you have to take them eventually yeah. right yeah if the value is too good for a player don't, don't be don't be too cute and be like oh I've got too many people on the same bye week or oh I've got to, uh, if the value of the player is right, think about the 16 weeks and the roster that you need to build, and y you'll be fine. And there's a lot made about a running back wide receiver stack being bad, and I actually don't believe that it is bad. It is bad when it comes to maximizing your high scores, right? We've talked about a wide receiver and running back can't usually score a touchdown on the same play, but at this, uh, on, the, uh, on the reverse of that, the consistency is higher because if you've got two guys that are going to score at the end of the year a lot of fantasy points, they probably didn't all come in the same five or six games. They were spread out a little bit more. So, I mean, we've seen that before when, when people stacked Saquon and Odell Beckham. I mean, obviously extreme examples, but the, you said, you know, you don't take two of your top four picks. You, you would have done that last year, and the consistency that you gained from having a running back wide receiver stack, they can work. Yeah, in that round, too, you know, it wasn't Lamar Miller wasn't going to be a starter. Lamar Miller was guaranteed carries at the position on your bench, which is different than stacking the other way. That being said, I look back and I probably got I probably dominated. Yeah, 
Is that what you were gonna say? No, you, you I, got, you I probably wasn't. got dominated. That didn't that didn't help me. It, well, yeah, I mean, you know, the, my favorite part of the comments on any head to head draft, I guess, here in June, is I was reading them to you yesterday. Yeah, and it was like sequential. It was like Jason, worst draft ever, uh, burning burning trash draft. Next guy, best draft ever by Jason. Right. Love his team. One of those was correct. <laughs> All right, news and notes. We haven't talked about a few things. Let's get into some contract news. Carson Wentz, four year, one hundred and twenty eight million dollar contract extension. Through twenty twenty four, not much to read about that. You want right. to you want to make the argument? Oh, the good. Then that means the back is healthy. It, it doesn't really. It matter. doesn't matter. They have to give this contract. It's good for Carson. Good for the Eagles. Good job. You got money. This one matters a little more. Vikings have re-signed Kyle Rudolph to a four year, thirty six million dollar contract extension. Sorry, all you Irv Smith owners. Yeah, there. I mean, I I modified my Irv Smith dynasty ranking in the aftermath and. If you spent a rookie pick on Irv Smith, you, you, barring something, you know, Kyle Rudolph could get cut before a four-year contract is fulfilled and probably will be. But he is going to be the starter for the next several years, and you don't have the Minnesota Vikings. They're not the offense where it's like you're going to have two fantasy-relevant <laughs> tight ends. It's disappointing because it caps the upside, no doubt. Blah Powell, re-signed by the Jets. Oh, Blah Powell! Blah! blah. Look, this is gross. Not for <laughs> Blau Pow. I'm so happy for him coming off the neck injury. But there are now 162 running backs playing for the New York Jets. They're going to have to make massive cuts. But you sign Le'Veon Bell. You give him all this money, and then you still keep adding running backs. I mean, look. They, they've Ty got Montgomery. A, they have a style. Lev Bell. If you look at the style of running backs they're going for, they want – Flexibility. Well-rounded. Yeah, I mean, Blau like Powell, Ty Montgomery, those are pass-catching running yeah. backs, same as Le'Veon Bell. And so maybe you say, okay, well, they, they've got backups if Love Bell goes down. Or maybe the history of Adam Gaze says Lev Bell might not be the Pittsburgh Steelers version of uh, Bell Cow. Would you, would you say that at this point Adam Gaze is reserving his right to be whole? Oh yeah, and he is—he is stocking up on cheese right now. He's oh, just God. eating so much cheese, ready to. All right, sir. Ready to, you know. Moving on. Send in the car. Huh? Send in the car. <laughs> Found out the Raiders yes. will be featured on this summer season of Hard Knocks. You're this very is, excited this about is the this. Best, this is the best Hard Knocks possible. Gruden and and if you watch when Gruden. Gruden does not want Hard Knocks there. No. He is so opposed to Hard Knocks being there, and that's going to make it great. Because <laughs> he's being forced <laughs> yes. to do it. And he'll act happy, and you'll be able to look right through it. And Antonio Brown and Josh Jacobs, unfortunately, will now go way too high in the draft. Josh Jacobs was going to be a value. Hard Knocks will ruin that. You think so? I do. Every year, someone from Hard Knocks well, is like, Oh, oh, I love him. He's, oh, and then they start going up one round, two round, three rounds higher in the draft. Uh, yeah, Devonta Freeman a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Speak to the Jacobs comment because we we are, I, I think, a very Jacobs uh, pro Jacobs show. Like from all three of us, believe Jacobs has a lot of upside. I actually noticed that that was one of the most common comments in our mock draft. Mm. was that Jacobs went too high when I took People didn't have confidence in Jacobs in Oakland. Well, you don't have confidence because you haven't seen him as a running back in the NFL. I get that. He's a rookie. He's coming in. He wasn't a guy who at Alabama was a workhorse, but he was the clear-cut best prospect coming in. He was drafted in the first round, and if you look at first-round data on running backs, their hit rate is very, very high. And now he's in a situation where you you lose Marshawn Lynch and and he is he is clearly the guy now for yeah Oakland. no Isaiah Crowell who they brought in to help him right Krampus so, is there yeah there, so no one is there there's very little competition and if you just look at it, you know the way that we do everything for the ultimate draft kit in the draft season we stat out every player every team every you know we we look at so much and if you were to stat out the Raiders. As an average NFL team, and you distribute the carries to the running backs in their system, it's going to be very difficult 
for barring injury for Josh Jacobs to not be a good you, we're talking definitely a high end RB two possibilities of being a low end RB one. Josh Jacobs or Marlon Mack, right here, right now. I'm going to go against the grain here, and I'm going to take Marlon Mack. You think that's against the grain? I believe that's against the grain because people still are not believers in Marlon Mack like I am. I am a true I, – I, I think the Colts are a great offense. I but think he won't Marlon catch, Mack is a great running back. He probably won't catch the ball, though. He probably won't catch as many as Josh Jacobs catches. I will grant you that. All right, some Tyreek Hill updates. According to NFL Network, barring further developments, there is every reason to believe – that is the quote, that Tyreek Hill will be back with the Chiefs before the start of next month's training camp. There is no active investigation, according to the district attorney, involving Tyreek Hill. Now, I, 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 we want to lay this out there, not because we know what the outcome is going to be of, uh, you know, whatever investigations. I guess there's no more investigations. The point is, he's not going to be banned from team activities forever. At this point... However, we, we don't know what the NFL is going to do, right? We don't know how long the NFL is going to suspend him. It, it seems that it is, I, I would bet, almost everything that I have on the fact he will be suspended for some duration. Yes, and if I were to bet on the duration, you're probably looking at eight games because six is pretty much the, the, the standard bearer. I mean, you know, because of his past his in history. college coming in, and and those are spelled out in the CBA terms, you know, like that has an active effect on suspensions. I would guess he gets eight games. Yeah, I think I think it'll be 10, 10 to 12. So that's the latest on Tyreek. We'll update you on what's going on. Tyreek's status for this season and beyond, it has huge implications on the draft stock of Sammy Watkins and Mecole Hardman and, and so and he, Pat Mahomes. even Pat Mahomes. Yeah, absolutely. All right, couple of OTA notes before we move on into the mailbag. Cam Newton cleared to throw at minicamp. Fantastic. Got to be able to throw. He is going to be a very good value in drafts this year. He does seem uh, like he will be. Eric Ebron, this is great news because we had the, what, two weeks ago we found out there was mystery groin surgery. <laughs> right, it's like one of those like, okay, this never happened because all of a sudden it was like, wait, Eric Ebron had groin surgery, but apparently it was m so minor they didn't talk about it and it has not affected his – Ability to play football. Running at full speed, Jason. That's the speed I want. Uh, Travis Kelsey is going to sit out mandatory mini camp with an ankle. Pat Shermer said. It's two of them. Evan Ingram, <laughs> Ingram sideline with a hammy. That's always fun. Miles, Sander, Miles Sanders hasn't participated uh, at all so far in Philadelphia. Make, you, know, you start to look a little bit at Jordan Howard and just how far down Jordan Howard is going to be drafted. There is, there's upside. You, you know the RBBC history of Doug Peterson. Certainly, just, just keep it in the in the in your headspace. Is and all I, we're saying. I was going to say this with Evan Ingram. You know, you look back at last year. This is so early, and we think all oh, these things don't matter. But goodness gracious, hamstring injuries around training camp and on they they have an effect they don't have an effect on everybody but there's a large percentage where it's like okay this has an early season effect on these guys and we have to start remembering this so Evan Ingram and Miles Sanders just put that in your mental notebook that like they are dealing with hamstring injuries right now in in OTAs I I believe that was one of your 10 th one of our 10 things to remember and that was one of yours Jason hamstring injuries yeah. specifically I'm, early on I'm going to write these guys down and do something about it. <laughs> uh, here's good news. Marquise Brown, Hollywood. Hollywood. Cleared for individual drills. That's not full practice. Hey, now. Hey, now. He's coming off the list, Frank. You love to see it. You need him on the right path if he's got any hope this year. Man, I want him to succeed so bad. I you know, I, I've been in talks with some people in, uh, in Baltimore who have been watching what is taking place. Uh, at minicamp, Lamar Jackson, new throwing motion for Lamar Jackson. Not looking good. That's not that's looking good from those observing. Now he's he, doing the under the un like the the softball pitch. He switched arms. <laughs> he, oh, he's going. He's lefty. going full lefty. I uh, saw Mahomes do it. Can't be worse. But but look, take it for what you will. Right, that's just evidence from people watching. It might it's going to take time to to develop that. But new offense. 
for Lamar Jackson. Built for Lamar Jackson. and from New what, throwing motion for Lamar Jackson. What we've heard, it is not going to be as run heavy for, for him. They want him in the pocket a little bit more. And, and by a little bit more, that means of course they do. He was going to break... I think he did already break. He, he will break every rushing record for a quarterback in the books if he never throws and just runs. Right. Which he may have to do again. Now, let That's me the ask, hard thing about, like, they can say what they want, mm -hmm. but when throwing doesn't work. And when running does work. Right. That's, they that's win. part of they the equation. Won, it's funny because they won so many games, right, Brooks? They yeah, won they, so many games, and then they're like, we want to win less games this year. <laughs> that's how it feels uh, the thing is is you just can't run lamar no, jackson you can't run him forever 30 times a game and then still have lamar jackson look i'm optimistic that lamar jackson can improve as a passer because he has to uh, and he can I, I you know i didn't think he was terrible as a passer in college he is sub nfl caliber accuracy but if if he just gets it to slightly less subpar we just want to see players like Mark Andrews and Hollywood Brown have an opportunity to flourish, Jason. Yes, I do. To flourish. I want to see it. Uh, Austin Hooper's not participating. Who, who cares? All right, here's something you do care about. Oh. Uh, by the way, hip injury, Debo Samuel, he's sitting out right now. Julio Jones. Julio. Limited during minicamp because of a foot injury. So. Is that, uh, has he had foot injuries before? He has. <laughs> He's had the same, you know, Sammy Watkins foot injury. Now you've Julian got him on. You've injury. got him on the same team that you have your Todd Gurley shares on, right? I do. Congrats and you acquired him. I well, I didn't want a over thirty year old former superstar dealing with a foot injury wide receiver in AJ Green who didn't have a contract. <laughs> so I wanted to move him for Julio. Yeah, because you he did. Was getting that big contract, which he still does not have yet, and now he has a foot injury. So here's the deal. I'm hoping that uh, he is sitting out because he wants his contract. At what point? And he's did just saying I got a foot problem. No, they, that would be nice. But then again, he's always had foot problems. At what point do they change in the reporting of injuries for guys like Julio and AJ Green instead of because of a foot injury, just because of their foot? Yes, yeah, like, like it's, their foot by default doesn't seem to be functioning at a at a high rate. Well, you never see that. You always see like, uh, you know. Uh, Cam Newton, shoulder, or uh, Travis Kelsey, ankle. I want to see, like, feet. Yes. Just Julio Jones had feet. Same old feet. Yep. All right, be sure to switch your Dynasty League over to Sleeper. Better yet, switch any league over to Sleeper. We just did our mock draft with the Sleeper platform on Tuesday, so you can check out that uh, episode of the show, get a, get a glimpse at the draft boards, download the app today. Um, you want to talk uh, to the Foot Clan? Yeah, who's doing the mailbag drop? Oh, crud. Jay Grizz. All right, Jay's got it. Mailbag. Oh, he did a great job. Not bad. Not bad. All right. If you have a question for the Fantasy Footballers podcast, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button. You can also leave a voicemail, 302-464-TFFB. Leave a voicemail question. We love helping your team. We're going to do that right now. We're going to jump in with a voicemail. Hey, ballers. How you doing? This is Phil from Florida. I'm wondering, should I trade Fournette for Mac? Full point PPR. Thanks, guys. Fournette for Mac? Yes, Fournette or sure. Marlon Mac. Now, he didn't say Dynasty, but I'm kind of assuming because it's asked about trade, a trade question. What do you guys we'll think? We'll answer both. All right, perfect. Uh, does it change? For you, I mean, look, I want the guy attached to Andrew Luck. I don't think either of them represent high PPR value. I don't like the variables involved with Leonard Fournette and the seemingly, if it's not bad blood, it's not good blood in Jacksonville between Tom Coughlin and, and Fournette and the injury history. So not that Mac hasn't had a, a little bit as well. It's a close call for me. I'd, I'd rather have Marlon Mack. If if this is a redraft league, I still lean Fournette because it, and and this is a risk issue for you. I mean, if you're trying to make this move and you say, I think Fournette carries higher risk. He has been dealing with injuries pretty much his entire life, high school, college, NFL so far, and he has been inefficient. But he's going to get the workload this year and be relied upon to a degree that if you're willing to take that injury risk. I think Fournette's 
I think Fournette has a great year this year. I know you're you're much further down on Fournette. I was just talking about how I like Marlon Mack, and so it's close. But in a dynasty, I do think. I mean, look, they've voided Fournette's Final guaranteed season. money. So if Fournette comes out and stinks or gets injured this year, Fournette could be done. I mean, Marlon Mack is like you said; he's attached to Andrew Luck. I trust that for going forward. Uh, more than I do for Fournette. So if it's Dynasty, I, I would go Mac. Yeah, these guys are basically back-to-back -back in our rankings in the UDK right now. And you're right. It's a risk aversion type of uh, question. On the PPR front, I do think that Fournette could be more involved than people think because he was actually already more involved than most people realize. And then they lost TJ Yeldon, who See, was the primary pass-catching back, and they replaced him with no one with a pass-catching skill set. And that's, I guess that would be the point that I'd want to speak to. I don't believe that what you see in Jacksonville today represents what Jacksonville will have as the rotation on day one. Like, it's right now it's easy to look at them and say, look, there's unproven commodities behind Leonard Fournette. But I don't believe that, look, when you, when you void the last year of the contract, you have a massive injury history. You suspended a guy for his off-the-field actions before or on-the-field shenanigans. And then... You go and trade T.J. Yeldon away. So I wait, you, you think they're going to add another back? I believe that they're going to utilize other backs in a, a much higher volume capacity than people think right now. But did you know? But do you know who their other backs are? Yeah, like Alfred Blue. No. Oh, sure. Alfred Blue is there. Okay. But this is a team that also brought in Carlos Hyde to do this for <laughs> Leonard Fournette last year and force fed him carries. And there are other, you know. Raquel Armstead is there, a draft selection, and there will be opportunities for other guys to come in. I don't think what I'm saying is all the evidence of what they've done with Leonard Fournette over the last year tells me they don't believe that he is reliable enough, and including going out and trading a draft pick and wasting it on Carlos Hyde. So why are they going to renew confidence in a guy that has shown a lack of confidence? I just, I just don't think, think on don't day have, one. I don't think they have a choice. Oh, I think at this point, the moves they've made, for better or for worse, I don't think Raquel Armstead and, and Alfred Blue are got, going oh, to. Benny Cunningham there, too. I mean, th these are rotation guys, for sure. But it's a very close call. I do think he's riskier. We have Fournette as a 6 out of 10 on the risk rating. We have Mar Marlon Mack as a 4 right now. Yeah. Uh, right. Better offense in Indianapolis. All right, Instagram question from W. Ryan East. He says, is there anyone you are targeting in the later rounds this year in the draft that could be a possible keeper the following year mm. of the draft? So, uh, definitely. <laughs> uh, you know, I Right before we came in here, I was just watching pretty much every carry from Rashad Penny. Um, Rashad Penny is, to me, a... So how long did that take you, Tim, is? <laughs> he did not have as many carries as one would hope. Your point is taken. Um, but he was, you know, he broke his finger early in training camp last year, was missing preseason games, and it went out with a knee injury. This season, there's no Mike Davis, who had about 150 touches. And right now, Chris Carson is saying he's going to be ready for the start of the season. So Rashad Penny is a guy that, if you listened last year, coming out of college, him and carry on Johnson – those were my two college love affairs, and uh, college is a crazy place. <laughs> you, you you explore in college, yeah, apparently. So the thing is, is I think he's a talented back, and if he gets an opportunity for a team that runs the ball as much as the Seahawks, the following year he could end up being a great keeper. Uh, if you're looking really deep, I mean, Devin Singletary jumps out oh, off the yeah. page. I mean, you're talking eleventh, twelfth round draft pick that could be a keeper, could have the main job next year. Royce Freeman, Cortland Sutton, those are other super deep Denver Bronco picks that could end up uh, surprising people. I like Kiki QT in, yeah. in PPR leagues. Um, I, you know, Brooks loves his Naeem Hines. Brooks does love Naeem Hines. Na Naeem Hines is so confident because of Brooks's just public endorsement on the show that he believes he can get 1,000 yards this year. Naeem Hines, Naeem Hines believes that because of Brooks. Wow, Brooks. This is funny timing. Uh, and we were talking about Marlon Mack earlier. Sleeper alert um, eight wow. minutes ago. 
Frank Reich, head coach, uh, calls Marlon Mack the main guy in the backfield. Oh, yeah. Hines, main third down guy, but also says the presence of Paris Campbell is going to eat into in- impact the, the role for Hines. Yep. Yes. And Bart I, Mack will not catch the ball. All I heard was <laughs> Marlon Mack is the main guy. Uh, it's funny because all I heard was Marlon Mack will catch zero passes this year. That's what I heard. Uh, Joe Courtney on Facebook, would you be confident having Mitch Trubisky as your dynasty quarterback? Or would you prefer uh or who would you prefer as a backup? Dalton or Stafford? Oof. Oof. Yuck. Um, no, I would not be confident. I mean, look, I would like to have Trubisky in a dynasty league. I'm not anti Trubisky in Dynasty League, but if he is my primary guy and you're talking about backups like <clears> Dalton, <throat> no, I'm not confident. I mean, I I would try to go out and trade for a guy who doesn't have you know, like a like a Dak Prescott level guy who I sure. think he's young, he's been fantasy relevant and proven, and he could step forward this year with an actual competent wide receiving core and try to shore that up. Um, if I had to pick between Dalton and Stafford, don't make me do that. I guess I go. I think I go with Dalton. Put it this way: if there's a chance that one of those two guys, I would go Dalton. If there's a chance that Stafford or Dalton is not a starting quarterback next year, it's Dalton. Dalton could be cut, yes. could be gone. Yes. Matthew Stafford's contract is much better for – like even if the, the Lions wanted to move on, they, they just can't. But I think that Dalton has the potential with Zach Taylor coming in, uh, getting an offensive-minded guy, replacing uh, Marvin Lewis uh, the defensive as a defensive head coach. I, I think – He's got weapons with Mixon and A.J. Green and John Ross and uh, Tyler Boyd. So, I like Dalton. All I, right. I, I I like Dalton. Okay. <laughs> you I just don't, don't, to don't, in that. You don't want people to get the wrong impression. I don't want a soundbite that just says I like Dalton. <laughs> I like Dalton. Okay. <laughs> Next. Just, just wink or cross your fingers. Do something behind your back. Uh, here's an AMA question that came in this morning. Some people had questions about the show. About the business, about us, Jason. It's a simple one. Uh, Anton wants to know: Do any of the fantasy footballers have pets? Oh, yeah, me. Um, I, I, we do as well. You have fake pets. Oh, come on. <laughs> Wait, so we have okay here. Just for because I know people yeah. aren't passionate about their pets. Nobody's passionate Nobody's about their pets. Nobody's passionate. Uh, fake pet number one: We have a parakeet. Right. Fake pet number two: My son has a bearded dragon. Yes. Fake pet number three. My wife has two um, uh, frogs. Frog, yeah. Uh, uh, poison dart yes. frogs. Yes. Uh, and fake pet number four. My daughter has a fish. Yes. Yeah, so, so we have four fake pets. So you have pets. <clears throat> you definitely have pets. But I call them fake pets because because you have dogs. You can't play with them. They're in a they're in a thing, and you look at them. You have artwork. <laughs> you have animal artwork. <laughs> I, you know, uh, so I've got two golden doodles. These dogs that you know come up on the couch and lay on my lap and cuddle up and yeah. You have portable messes. Well, let's just say, that's, I, yes, that's, that's true. You, you have, that's true. You have a lot less mess than I do. But I, I, I say I can uh, <clears throat> hear me pet them. Oh, well, wait, yeah, I, I get it. I don't pet my fish as much. It's difficult to get the scuba. Or the poison dart frogs. Yeah. We don't pet them as often. Very dangerous. Um, I think the bearded dragon is the only one that gets held. Let's put it that way. There you go. I mean, they are real pets. You care for them. You guys love them. But they're, they're pet art. <laughs> You're walking it back because you don't want all of the I know. The Everyone's frog, gonna be like, bird. How dare you say those are pets? You I know almost what? earned some if new you, fans If you're there. listening right now and you're like, oh, Jason, what a jerk. He's so... He, you know what I'm saying. Sure. You and know- to be clear, to be clear, neither of us have cats. And that's the important oh, thing. Oh, thank <laughs> goodness. No, uh, we've actually got a rule with the three of us. Anybody that gets a cat, yeah. no longer a You baller. lose your equity you're, in the uh, company. You're out of the company. You're done. What if that's for sure going to be the first pet that I do get? Uh, a cat? Yeah, it is going to be. Wait, you said it is? Yeah. Have you had pets, uh, cats had- before? Yeah. Yeah. Now, are, you're not confusing those with dogs, are you? They're both great. They are oh, Mr. Switzerland. Both great. One, one of them is great, and that's a dog. <laughs> um, you know, if you if you take the plunge, Brooks, just you know, get the dander off before you come in. You want to keep your job. That's all I'm saying. 
Yeah, uh, Andy's very it, It's funny because my cats. wife believes that I would be a cat guy, but I'm really allergic to cats. But she thinks they're like the perfect pet for me because they just kind of leave you alone. They're mm-hmm. off. They're they're chill, not high maintenance. I completely understand what she's saying, but they will murder. They would murder you. me. All right, Instagram question from Bo Griff. Oh, hey Bo Griff. In twelve man standard, which Chargers player has better value? Mike Williams in the fifth round or Hunter Henry in the sixth round? I know my answer. I know your answer as well. Your answer is clearly going to be Mike Williams because... I'm going to spend so much time talking about Mike Williams this offseason. You really are. And I I, I want to say you're going to make a mistake, but I see a lot of the rationale for it. It's just tough because he he had 11 total touchdowns. He did. and, And so... It's hard. He's not going north, I don't think, in the touchdown he count. He probably won't go north in the touchdown count, but he will go north in the snap percentage. He was in the 60s in total snap percentage on the offense. And he's great. And Tyrell's gone, and Mike Williams is ascending. He was one of the best uh, contested catch players in football. But Hunter Henry is there. Yes. I'm and not- it's a standard league, too, and both of these guys are touchdown guys. Yeah. So you're not- you're you're – they're both values in this situation, aren't they? Well, no, no Hunter, Hunter Henry's not. not. Hunter so, Henry's so not Mike a value. Is My, yes, clearly the Mike pick. Williams is the pick because, look, the difference between a touchdown guy like Hunter Henry and someone you're going to get six, seven, eight rounds later, you go ahead and do the job of predicting which week the touchdown comes. It's it's not going to be easy. I'm I'm basically on record of saying you you got the top three tight ends, and I, I would throw two more in there as uh, consistent producers – and then otherwise, I'm I'm leaving tight end for a long time. Double-digit rounds. All right. Uh, voicemail question. Hey, guys. This is Corey from Pittsburgh. I have a question about uh, Tariq Cohen and David Mopportunity. So uh, I noticed that right now they are right next to each other in the rankings. Uh, you guys seem really high on David Montgomery, but uh, Tariq Cohen has a lower ADP. And so I was wondering if you would, uh, if you would suggest waiting a little bit to take Tariq especially since uh, early in the season, he's maybe going to get a bit more work. So uh, thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Well, first of all, that's a that's a great question. And I think when you draft these players, you m- might be drafting them for different reasons. Right. I think in a full PPR format, I would 100% take the better value in Tariq Cohen myself. Yeah, I mean, half PPR, I've got them back-to-back in my own personal, not just like our consensus rankings, but in mine. My, my opportunity one spot ahead of Tariq Cohen. I think the issue is one of these guys could become a three down back and it's not Tariq Cohen. No doubt. So that's why you see Tariq Cohen going later. It's the hope that David Montgomery comes in, gets the gets the Jordan Howard workload of this is a team that really wants to run the ball, but also has the Kareem Hunt skill set of they can have the same people, the same uh, personnel on the field through passing downs, through rushing downs. They couldn't do it last year. And so Montgomery's ceiling to me is higher. Generally, and I don't <clears> – <throat> I think it can go both ways depending on how you play it. But three down backs are hard to find. That's the thing to remember. There's a reason people take those chances. Even if you're rolling the dice on one, they're very difficult to find. And if you find one later – in your draft, what an advantage that is. If you have, you know, the common players on championship teams are the value running backs a lot of the times that you, you know, Philip Lindsay was essentially a three-down back last year for fantasy owners. Great mm-hmm. value later in the draft. Same thing with Matt Burita last year. You had opportunity, you know, they helped you along because of the value you got. So I think that's why my opportunity, Montgomery, so tempting yeah. for a lot of people. The, the issue is as we get closer to the season's, rookies always go up in ADP. That's yes. what happens. They yes. start low because people don't know them. They haven't seen them. Then they start scouting. They, you know, you get, get a couple preseason games. games. Preseason yeah. games. And so Montgomery right now is top of the fifth. Yeah. He's not going – he very well might not be a value in the draft. If he's top of the fourth by draft season – Which he will be. Yeah, I mean – I think he's worth that pick. I'm not saying that's a bad pick, but it's not the Philip Lindsay. It's not the value. Right. Oh. Goffrey's breaking in for just a moment. Introducing. We do want to remind the Foot Clan 
Ballers Live. We're hitting the road, my friend, and we're hitting it quick. Next week, we'll be in Chicago. Next Friday, we'll be in Chicago. Wait, are you in Chicago, listener? Oh, I thought you were talking to me. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm right here. I'm talking to the listener who's if, in Chicago. If you're in Chicago, if you're around Chicago, New York, San Francisco, L.A., Phoenix, head to BallersLive.com, grab some tickets, come hang out with us. It's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. We are going to be talking about our individual, not consensus, our individual breakouts and busts at that show. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. So check it out, BallersLive.com. Let's get into another question here. Let's go with uh, an Instagram question. Uh, SB Roster 27, and a half point per reception league. Would you rather draft Marlon Mack or Aaron Jones? Another Marlon Mack related question. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron Jones or Marlon Mack? I have been on record. Uh, I am a big Aaron Jones fan. I, I like Marlon Mack, but I like Aaron Jones more because I believe he can own more of that backfield than Mack can own of his. They're both great picks. Aaron Jones is more risky. Aaron Jones is, is definitely more risky because Marlon Mack is the quote-unquote main guy, and for some reason Jamal Williams has convinced other people that he should be a, a 1A, 1B type with Aaron Jones. The ceiling is higher with Aaron Jones. So to me, as far as who would I rather – draft I'd rather draft the later guy yeah that's I mean between these two guys I think they both have upside and they both got you know mm. some some worries and right now the later guy is Aaron Jones he's going um a, almost a full round later than Marlon Mack so the upside with Aaron Jones as much as I like Mack this is twice I've gone against my Mack on this show and I don't I don't like it but yeah it's just the truth yeah Thought you were big on Mac. I am, but I th that doesn't mean I'm exclusive. We're not just we're seeing other people right now. <laughs> we're, we're allowed to draft other running backs. So even after college, you're still yeah. experimenting. Yeah, that doesn't mean I don't like Mac. <laughs> okay, here's another AMA question that came in from Deacon Baldy. Shout out to Deacon Baldy's. He says, "Do you guys hang out outside of work? And if so, what are your shared interests other than fantasy?" We do. Uh, not fantasy. We are all Cardinals fans. We are all Cardinals fans. Uh, we all have three children, mm -hmm. and so they keep us very busy. Uh, I've known Jason for about 20 years. Yeah, um, I've, I've I mean, known you for t about 30. <laughs> <laughs> That's creepy. Yeah. Uh, but so, yeah, we definitely hang out. Uh, yesteryear's gone by. Oh, flag, it's all flag football and basketball. Yeah, basketball in true yesteryears. Flag football in recent years. Uh, uh, movies. Uh, we work out together once every six weeks, <laughs> well, right? Because, because you show up once every six weeks. Right. Right. Um, sure. So yeah, we we do get the families together from time to time. We live very close together. Yeah. We yeah. even occasionally go on trips. We'll go to Disneyland together. Yeah. It's been yeah. a while since that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Once you stop paying, I was just. Like, I, know, I was like. Yeah. All right, next question comes in from another Instagram question. Would you rather have the number one overall pick or the 12th pick? So you want to be... So you, this is from Dollar Bill 248 Would you rather be number one or would you rather be the 12th pick because then you're on the turn? That's a good question. If this is Dynasty, I without a doubt want that first pick. I, the, the top four or five guys I think are, um, you know, you'd trade up for them. So... If this is just talking about a 2019 redraft league, where would I rather be? Usually I would say the one, but this year I think I lean more the two because there are, we've talked about it, there's a lot of guys at the end of the first round and possibly in the second round that I think could be top five backs. I mean, depending on how far David Johnson's falling or Melvin Gordon or, or James Conner, or these, these players are players that I think in previous years have the potential to be what had to cost you one of those top three picks. And right now, you know, who's the number one pick in most ADP is Saquon Barkley. Barkley could finish below any of those guys I just named. I, I, you know what I mean? But, but if you pick first, that means your next player is the 25th pick. That's hard. It is hard. It is hard. Seattle backfield question, Jason. This one's for you. Okay. 
I know you watched all of the Penny this morning. Jeff in New York City, how do you see the usage breaking down in the Seattle backfield this season? Do you think Penny can overtake Carson this year? So overtake no. Carson if I, they both stay healthy. So if they're both healthy, I don't believe so. And that's not because of Rashad Penny's talent. Uh, Pete Carroll is a player's coach. Pete Carroll loves his guys, supports his guys, and he believes in Chris Carson. In fact, he literally just, this was hours ago, was on record saying Chris Carson is in the best shape of anybody on the team. He is a Chris Carson believer. Now that he's still injured, he's still dealing with a knee injury, he can't play football right now, but Pete Carroll loves the guy. And, and I think what you could see happen realistically is a true 1A, 1B where you've got two solid fantasy producers this season. And you can't do that in many offenses, but no. you definitely can in Seattle. You have 150 touches from Mike Davis out of the way. You've got an That's a lot. That's a lot. You've got efficiency coming from Rashad Penny that you saw last year. Rashad Penny has cut weight. He is down. He's getting all the first-team reps right now while Chris Carson is away. And you could really have a team that's rushing the ball 500 times breaking down – I mean, you could have two players approaching 200 carries, one probably well over. Now, that being said – Now, at, at ADP right now, Carson is a value. They're both so, values. So then it, it's do you take Carson at, at his value or Penny at his value right now? Well, if I had to pick it right now today, I would rather go with Rashad Penny. Carson's a 409. Penny is a 703. That's why, and as well as – look – You've got a guy saying he's going to be ready by the beginning of the season, but you. As How of right terrified now, would injured. you be to have both on your team? That would that would not be fun because you're 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 not going to want to start both players at the same time. Yeah, and you don't want to spend a seventh round pick on a handcuff. So I would I would I wouldn't I wouldn't stack that. Yeah, but I do think I mean, I think Penny. Look, Chris Carson has never been able to stay healthy. And is currently not healthy. So the question was, could Rashad Penny take over if Chris Carson is healthy? I don't believe so. Could Rashad Penny be one of the best fantasy player, best fantasy picks this season? I 100% believe that he's got a very good shot of a breakout season. All right, let's jump into another voicemail. Hey, Ballers. Steven from New Jersey. You guys talk a lot of strategy on startup dynasty leagues, but how do you change from a redraft strategy on a startup keeper league? Rules are keeping three players, and next year you keep them two rounds ahead of where you drafted them the previous year, and no holding on to waiver players. Thanks. Bye. Oh, I love that last part. Oh, but no, no holding on to waivers. I love that. That's that's my preferred method for keeper leagues. Waiver players is they're great. You don't get them. My advice for the and I have I have we've played in leagues like this all the time. I mean, this is this is kind of bread and butter type of league for us. Three keepers. I think one of the mistakes people can make when they go into a league like this is believing that those three keeper spots need to dictate so much of what you do during the season because they don't. Such a common mistake. Because they don't. There will all. I mean, if you are managing your roster the right way, you cannot live in this frame of mind where, oh my gosh, I just got to have. I got to keep. I got to figure out my three keepers and just keep them on lockdown. Yeah, I got to trade my team. I, my team gets a little worse, but my keeper situation is set up. Oh, I got to draft this guy who's younger yeah. because I'll be able to keep him for more years into the future. If you're only keeping three or four guys, you're going to change what you think every yeah. single yeah. year. And guess what you do when you do that? You don't put yourself in the position to be fluid with what reality is. Because if you draft a guy that's a little bit younger for the purpose of being a keeper – and that player underperforms. Guess what you're going to do? Are you going to keep him? Yeah, you probably are, You're stupid. probably going to keep him, or are you going to try to sell him on what you bought him for, and which is not going to work. So, so basically, keeper leagues, you use the advice of redraft. Yes. Don't. Almost entirely. Unless you're keeping seven guys or more, then, it's, then it shifts to me to be more like a dynasty where – Okay, age is going to matter, and and seven keeper leagues are very very. If rare. you're in a three keeper, the the one place that it impacts it slightly for me is around the trade deadline. Just giving your roster a glance and knowing that you're in a flexible position with the keepers, right? Yeah. yeah. If you have like we have leagues where you can you're restricted on what positions you can keep. You can't just keep three running backs. So if you're in a league that has some restrictions, 
you know, you can only keep one at each position, at least make sure you have flexibility there. But that's at the trade deadline. You can make those adjustments. And, um, you know, you're just going to be surprised I honestly by the time the year's over what players are good that you thought weren't going to be good and that type of thing. If you're in a keeper league, this little last couple minutes will, will help you beat the other people in your league because it is <laughs> such a common it's mistake. True. Um, all right, we're going to do one more AMA question here before we close the show out. Dakota wrote in, has there ever been a big argument – between you guys on how to run the business that mm. got heated. Oh, so heated. If rem- so, what was that argument oh, about? Yeah, you remember the time we fought about just like what kind of snacks are we gonna have? I don't. I can't. I I, I, I genuinely can't remember. Brooks, you've been around yeah. here for a while. Have you seen? A big You're kind of like the kid. You know what I mean? The parents. They're mm-hmm. downstairs. Uh, what scar in the you? kitchen? Yeah. What. When you watch us through the banisters on the on the stairs. What do you tell your therapist? When you hear the screaming. When I put this question in here, I couldn't think of a, a single instance of the business. Have we All the you... arguments come from the, the shuffleboard or foosball. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we get very passionate about shuffleboard. We're more foosball. tilty on that, aren't we? <laughs> the only thing that will cause like 20 minutes of angered silence in this office is shuffleboard or foosball. Yeah. Right? I mean, we, we, yeah, we, that's the truth. We've certainly disagreed. We, Lots oh, of times. Four, the four time. years of this business. We worked together for eight years before that. That's I we don't mind disagreeing. No, we like we like having different opinions on business things and, and arguing over them and fighting until we get a solution. And and I wouldn't say that we're always happy. Like we're you know, eventually if we disagree on how to implement X, yeah. One person will win that argument and the other person will probably be a little like ah, oh, i think it's wrong for about 10 minutes yeah and that's we're very thankful for that yeah that's the max you know a lot of you out there jay grizz gets really upset you know when he's we, he gets pissy yeah he gets really <laughs> he gets real busy he keeps like where's my salmon i'm like never gets the word in the studio never gets the word in edgewise despite his kind of size yeah. which has got to be disappointing <laughs> Got to be frustrating. If I was his size, yeah, I would talk for. I wouldn't let you talk. No, I know, I know. You know, I will say this. I this genuinely bothers me when I see these comments. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna bring it up. Whenever I see a comment on YouTube where people think I don't like you, Jason, (laughs) yeah, it bothers the heck out of me. Yeah, it makes me look inside myself as to what I'm doing. Hate me to send that message. And it makes me sad on the inside. And and here's the thing. And it's, I had to tell somebody the other day, I'm like, they're like, why do I get the impression Andy doesn't care for Jason? That's what someone said. I go, it's so far the opposite. We're lifelong friends. Yeah, we, we're, we're, we're very close. Uh, I know you love me. I think the reality is we are passionate about <laughs> our belief. Like, like when I talk, it's really player based. Like. Like how I am right about Sammy Watkins, <laughs> and you are so yeah. wrong, but you believe it so much <laughs> that you respond condescendingly, and you just—I mean—you come off real I dumb. Do, I, <laughs> <laughs> that's—I mean, <laughs> see, there's a little bit of truth in that big old insult. You stir just the pot. a little bit. All right, let's move. Let's move on. Pristine. All right. Today's pristine deal of the day. Michael Thomas signed New Orleans Saints jersey. Oh, my goodness. $47. It's <laughs> just ridiculous. $47.91. PristineAuction.com. Mean, Michael Thomas is probably never going to be anything. No, no, no. He's, the Saints are probably he'll never going to break out. Not, they're never going to get to the playoffs. Use the registration code BALLERS at PristineAuction.com when you browse their vast arrays of daily sports uh, memorabilia auctions. Always something great to grab over there. Hey, if you're a Melvin Gordon owner. Oh, yeah. He's changing his number. You're going to want a new jersey. He's going from what, 28 to 25? That's correct. Because he wants to ruin all of you who have bought his jersey before. Blame him. I believe that was his number in college. Yeah. He's going back. Yeah. College. A lot of college talk on today's show. Uh, that is it. Brooks, you got any final words? Any uh, thoughts for the listeners out there? Nope. Good. Good, because you weren't going to get to say them. 
We love you, Brooks. We do. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening, supporting the show. Definitely check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com, and we'll catch you next week. Mike will be back. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.